Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship on this All Saints Sunday. Today is the day in which we celebrate and remember the lives of our church family that we have lost since our last All Saints Day together, which would have been last November the 1st. So in your insert in the bulletin, you can see the pictures of the people who now rest in the church triumphant. There are candles representing them on the altar. You'll notice there are seven candles on the altar. The seventh candle is in remembrance of all of our loved ones all the people we know who now rest in the arms of Jesus. And we're grateful this day, remembering that one day we will be with them again. If you remember our tradition, we have two sets of candle trays. During any of our hymns, you are welcome to get up, make your way over to the candles, and light a candle in remembrance of a friend or a loved one. So please feel free to do that. I have just a few announcements. The first is a reminder that next week, we will move back to one service, just one service, and we will return to that service at 9 o'clock. It will be indoors. Um, we all are welcome. Uh, this is a call for me to call you home, call you back to worship. Um, it's good to see many people today we haven't seen in a while. Also, it is time to sign up for poinsettias and wreaths for our doors for the season of Advent, for the season of Christmas. So please make sure that you do that. You can call and give them to Diana. One last reminder that on November the 15th, we will have an annual meeting following this worship service, and our annual meeting will be held outside. So we're hoping to have a quick annual meeting. Next week, we will have the packets available for you. If we have an email on file, they will get submitted electronically, but if you would like a paper copy, they will be available next week during our worship service. Those are the announcements I have. Do you have announcements, Pastor? We got the news that one year later, our directories are coming. They have been shipped and they are on the way. So as soon as we have them, we will let you know so that you can pick them up. Good morning, everyone. Great. Okay. So a couple announcements for me for the CYF half of our church life together. Yesterday, we had a wonderful trunk or treat event in our side parking lot last night. There's some fun pictures on Facebook, so be sure to check those out. We had about 150 kids was my rough um, estimate come by, and that's not even counting their families. We, we visited with a lot of people in our community last night, so thanks be for that. Uh, with November comes new CYF events, um, and so next Sunday after worship, uh, the youth will be taking a trip to Camp Nawakwa, and we'll be doing a hike and playing some games and having a fun outdoor day there. So please, if you know any youth, um, 
they are more than welcome to join us. And we have some other uh, children and family events listed in your bulletin and in your emails that you receive as well. One final announcement is that, as always, Sunday school is right after worship in our fellowship hall for our kids and down in the basement for our adults. We invite you to come and attend Sunday school. Um, and one last thing I want to say before we formally start worship is a welcome to all of us on uh, live stream. Uh, the, the live stream computer is right, uh, right there on our left side of our sanctuary, your left side of the sanctuary, and we're, we're trying the live stream experiment out. This is our second week in a row. We really worked on sound quality this week, so bear with us um, if you are watching on live stream as we continue to work and to figure that out. That's something we hope we can get really down pat, especially by the time it gets really cold. I have just one prayer request for this week, or oh, maybe two. The first is to pray for our country as we go into an election cycle. I ask that you keep all the voters in your prayers. I ask that you keep the people who are running polling booths in your prayers. Keep the candidates in your prayers. I pray that it's a time of peace and unity for our country. Also, Sandy Trone is having surgery this week on Thursday, so I ask that you would keep Sandy in your prayers. She's having a rotator cuff repair, so please keep her in your prayers. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. I invite you to stand as you are able as we begin our worship together with a brief order of confession and forgiveness found printed in your bulletin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our opening hymn, found printed in your bulletin insert, is for all the saints. We'll sing the first two verses.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion, in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment, and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. Our first reading for today comes from the seventh chapter from the book of Revelation. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and the, around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white? And where have they come from? I said to him, Sir... You are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God, and they worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to their springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now read responsively Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the humble hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me out of all of my terror. Look upon him and be radiant, and let not your faces, faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction, and the Lord heard me and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encompasses those who fear him, and he will deliver them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. Fear the Lord, you that are his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. The Lord ransoms the life of his servants, and none will be punished who trust in him. Here ends the reading. Our second reading for today comes from 1 John, the third chapter. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we like him, we will be like him, but we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise as you are able for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, 
for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated up. This time I'm going to have Annie come up to have a message with her. Come on over. How are you doing this morning? Did you have a good time being a troll yesterday? Yeah? Well, this children's message, when I thought about it this morning, I thought about you. Because we're talking about nicknames. What is the name that you were given when you were born? Do you know what your name is? What is it? Annabelle. Annabelle. Do they people call you Annabelle or do they call you something else? Annabelle. They call you Annie, right? It's a nickname. I bet lots of the people sitting out here today have nicknames. When I was in high school, they used to call me by my last name. I used to be called Schmidt. That's kind of weird, isn't it? Yeah. So we all kind of have some nicknames, but today we celebrate that Jesus gives all of us a special nickname. That nickname is Saint. Not the New Orleans Saints, but Saint. And you know what that means when God gives us the nickname Saint? It means that we were created just like God. He created us to be just like him. And that even when we make bad choices, that God forgives us. And that we get to live forever. How great of news is that? It's pretty good, right? And even better than that, one day when we go to heaven, we're going to get to see all the people that we love, all the saints who are already with God. And that is what it means to have a nickname, Saint. So today, I'm going to ask if your family will call you Saint Annie. What do you think? Good, good. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for calling us Saint. Thank you for claiming us as your own and giving us the promise that one day we will see all the people who have now rest in your arms and that we are Saint right now on earth. In your most holy name we pray. Amen. Thanks, Annie. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation in our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Church has almost always been a part of my life. Some of my first church memories were as a young child when I was about three or four, about Annie's age, and we would go to church and we would play church or play house under the front pews in the church while my great-grandmother gave me orange Tic Tacs. I can still remember the smell of the Sunday school classroom that I attended as the little girl. It was kind of musty. And I can remember a cute little old lady named Viola, or as we called her, Auntie Vi, who always had hot pink lipstick stuck on her front teeth. I can still hear my great-grandmother's voice as she sang her favorite hymn, The Old Rugged Cross, during worship. I remember standing her next to her after worship was over and listening to all the little old ladies say how big I had gotten since the last time that they had seen me and watching my great-grandmother beam as the proud memmy that she was. As I got older, my memories changed a bit. What I remember is my mom making us go to the 8 o'clock service, or as she called it, the get-it-over-with service. I was one of the few children who went to that church service, and so my brothers and I, more often than not, served as an acolyte, and I was always forced to sit up front. Pretty ironic now that I do it every Sunday. Some days I liked it, 
but more often I did not like it at all. I also remember my youngest brother, at the ripe old age of eight, being able to recite the entire liturgy, including all of the pastor's parts, and giving us communion at lunch out of chips and salsa. But what happened in that church service was more important than these memories, or more me being acolyte, or me being forced to get up early every single Sunday morning. You see, in the frontish left portion of the pews at St. Matthew's Lutheran Church sat two of the most adorable little old people I had ever met. They had been married for longer than I had been alive, and their daughter was both my sixth grade and my eighth grade English teacher. This couple, who I affectionately came to know as Will and Pop, became my church grandparents. They followed and celebrated all of my school accomplishments and my church accomplishments. They came to my handbell concerts, my musical performances, even a soccer game or two. They celebrated with me when I was accepted into my college at Lenore Rhine and helped to throw me a big party when I was entranced into seminary. And all the while, while I was away at school, they were constantly checking in on me through my parents. Every visit home, I stopped by their house to see them. I was really devastated when Pop died. And then when my daddy died, Will showed up for me. Not long ago, Will died too. And I was pretty sad for us. But I was so grateful that Will and Pop were back together the way that it was supposed to be. And I know that thanks to Jesus, one day we will be together again, gathered around that heavenly banquet table. These people are some of my most favorite saints from church, and they taught me so much about relationship, relationship with each other and with God. They taught me that just like them, God always shows up. They are the reason I call us church family. I'm so grateful for their witness to me and to many other of the children in my growing up church. On this All Saints Day, who is it that helped to shape your faith life? Maybe it was a grandparent or a parent. Maybe, like me, you had a special set of church grandparents. Or maybe it was a Sunday school teacher or a friend's parent. So many people have helped to shape our faith life, and today we celebrate them. Here at St. Paul, we remember those in our church family, our saints, who have entered the church triumphant since our last All Saints Sunday. We remember Don and Jerry, Fred, Harold, Jack, and Carl. We celebrate the ways that they influenced our faith journey and the tremendous gift that they gave to this church. I will always remember Don being one of the best huggers. She had the biggest heart and wanted nothing more than to be surrounded by her family. She loved this church and always gave big bags of coins on Noisy Coin Sunday. Jerry is a man of many, many words. What I remember most about him is his ability to be able to talk to him for hours and not being able to gracefully exit the room. Like the last time I visited him in the hospital, when he was still talking to me when I was outside of his room. He also drove the bus for youth trips. Fred was such a sweetheart. He loved his daughter and his grandson and Nadine so very much. Fred was a fighter. He never gave up on life and gave his best effort to beat cancer and pulmonary fibrosis. He was also incredibly generous always giving to others. Harold, or more affectionately known by his family as Gene, was an extremely gifted carpenter. He could look at something and know how it was made and how to fix it. He built that platform right over there that the piano sits on, and the built-in cabinets in the front of the church when you walk in from the mill entrance, and he made these stools that are sitting at the bottom of the pulpit. Even later in life, when Gene suffered from Alzheimer's, what I remembered is he still loved to measure things, and he definitely loved his sweets, especially his Three Musketeer bars. Jack was one of the most loving men I know. 
He loved his wife, Sue, with a deep, deep love. He loved his family, and he loved this congregation. He was a faithful worshiper and served on the finance committee, always trying to find a way to save us money. I will always cherish the time that I spent with Sue and Jack sitting in their home listening to them tell me stories about Phil and Ann Gladfelter, this congregation and their life and family. Jack was a true gentleman. Carl is one of the most determined men I have ever met, well determined or stubborn. He liked things done his way, and that was the end of it. It may have been the reason that he lived to be almost 103. He loved his partner, Loretta, and his family with a big, big love. I was so grateful to be invited to, into their home and to be with him. He loved talking about how Spring Grove in York County was when he was a young man and explaining how things had changed over the years. These six people are only a small part of our congregation, but in some ways, they are a big part. They are a part of who we are and what completed us as the body of Christ, as our church family. As we mourn that they are no longer physically with us, we celebrate that they now rest at the feet of Jesus, and that one sweet day, we will get to be with them again. Until then, Jesus invites us to feast with them at the banquet table. Every single time we partake in communion, we are gathered in the same place and the same time, feasting with them. I know that it doesn't feel the same, but I pray that it will sustain us in hope until one day we are reunited. And even more so today, I pray that their lights, the lessons that they taught us, the ways that we saw Christ through them continue to shine on and live through us every time we share their memories, as we witness the way that they did, as we celebrate them. Let us never forget the saints of light. Let their witness be our witness, illuminating the hands and feet of Christ in this community and in the world. Amen. I invite you to rise as we continue with our hymn, Shall We Gather at the River, verses 1 and 2.
Please remain standing as we confess the faith of the church using the words of the Apostles' Creed um, printed in your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and on all in need. Gracious God, you invite those who feel most unworthy of love to a seat at the head of your table. Through humility, vulnerability, and repentance of your church, bring a compassionate welcome to all in need of your grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sustaining God, guide all people of the earth through harsh extremes and the cycles of creation, drought and monsoon, blistering heat and freezing cold. Hold in your mercy all places where lives have been disrupted by natural disaster. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sovereign God, gather our country around a shared table this week during our national election. Open fruitful dialogue between people of every political party, place, age, and socioeconomic status, so that we may discern the common good that you desire for us. Lord, in your mercy hear our prayer. Merciful God, protect those whose human dignity has been denied and oppressed in our nation and around the world. Raise the voices of those who have been silenced and bring justice where power has been abused for personal gain. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing God, comfort those afflicted by illnesses of the body, mind, or spirit. Bring healing to the sick, community to the lonely, and strength to the poor. We especially lift up Steve Baggett, Jill Wentz Tarman, Greg Yohe, Virginia Gensler, Sandy Trone, Laura Marks, Janet Cress, Bill Toman, Bill Sterner, Mary Jane Boone, Pat Bortner. Grant them all your healing touch. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, accompany those in new and unfamiliar places who need an invitation to community. We pray especially for those who have recently moved to start their first year of college, a new job, or a new missionary position. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, you unite all the faithful in a banquet of your abundance. This day we remember all who now feast in your eternal presence, especially all those who have died in this past year. Harold Deerdorf. Don Toman, Jack Silcox, Jerry Kramer, Fred Burns, Carl Allwine. We also remember all the saints who are now at rest in the arms of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. At this time, we continue our worship with the offering. Ian will play an offer toy for us. You're invited to leave your offering on the way out in a basket at our doors.
I invite you to stand as you are able for our offertory prayer. Let us pray. Merciful God, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, we continue our worship with the Liturgy of the Holy Communion. I invite you to go ahead and break your uh, tabs on your communion cup for a little bit more ease of access. Um, and you are invited to take your mask off and partake when we reach that point in the service. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the witness of your saints, you show us the hope of our calling and strengthen us to run the race set before us, that we may delight in your mercy and rejoice with them in glory. And so with Harold, Don, Jack, Jerry, Fred, Carl, And with all the saints eternal, with the choirs of angels and the host of heaven, we praise your name. Holy God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, endless is your mercy and eternal your reign. You have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. We praise you for the grace shown to your people in every age. The promise to Israel, the rescue from Egypt, the gift of the promised land, the words of all the prophets. And at the end of all the ages, the gift of your Son, who proclaimed the good news in word and deed and was obedient to your will, even to giving his life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, our Lord took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, O God, with this bread and cup, we remember the life our Lord offered for us. And believing the witness of his resurrection, we await his coming and power to share with us the great and promised feast. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Send now your Holy Spirit, that we who share in Christ's body and blood may live to the praise of your glory and receive our inheritance with your saints in the light. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and every place, and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And so we pray with confidence as our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see. But the Lord is good. This is the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ given for you.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. And let us pray. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. And we pray that in your mercy you would strengthen us through this gift in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is Children of the Heavenly Father, verses 1 and 2. peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.